Welcome back to the Courageous Nerd channel for another interview. I'm Connor and joining me is Thomas Pound. Thomas is a writer and producer on the hit CW series The Flash. We talk all about Thomas' experiences on the show, including in the run-up of the hit crossover event Crisis on Infinite Earths. If you enjoy this interview or any of the others on the channel, please be sure to like and subscribe. Great. So welcome and thank you for taking the time to do this. Thank you for having me. Great. And I guess what inspired you to pursue a career in screenwriting? It's, you know, it was initially, um, I, I grew up just a, a massive TV and film snob. I, I was always mm. that guy in the group of friends who, after we saw whatever movie would say like, yeah, it was, it was good, but you know what they should have done? and just annoyed everybody in my circle until I think eventually one day a friend of mine said, he was just tired of listening to me. <laughs> and he mm -hmm. said, you know what, just go, go write that version as a, as a joke. And it honestly was kind of a light switch moment of going, oh yeah, I should. And so then as a teenager, I just became obsessed with screenplays and, and reading as yeah. many as I could and learning about structure and learning about the process and it pushed me down a path to to eventually go out to Vancouver Film School just to educate myself on well how how are these things just made just practically by the people uh, on on the ground just kind of the salt of the earth nuts and bolts of it yeah uh, and that's that's really gave me like a deeper appreciation into pursuing the the storytelling and 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 really thinking of it as a, a real tangible thing that is made by people which which always still i still carry with me to this day yeah and obviously just in case people are unaware of some of the stuff you've done uh, you've been a writer on the flash since i believe the fourth season is that right yes i started on season four we're now we're now doing season seven yeah uh, which is crazy but Oh, but yes, sorry. I started. No, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to ask, like, how, how familiar were you with the show before being hired for it? Oh, I was very familiar. I was, mm. uh, I, it was one of those shows. So back when it premiered, I mean, I grew up yeah. a big comic book fan. Uh, I have a Superman tattoo. Uh, right. DC is my, is my jam. Uh, <laughs> so anything superheroes I've always been obsessed with. And Arrow came out and I was a fan of that show. And, but then when I remember when Flash was coming out, I was working in Vancouver, uh, writing on a Canadian series at the time. Mm. And seeing the promos of it, it just it had a different flavor that that immediately appealed to me. I mean, I, I loved the, the kind of gritty, darker vigilante tone that Arrow introduced into TV, uh, which was so perfect for that character. But then to see uh, this kind of lighter, hopeful, optimistic tone that the Flash looked like it was going to bring to TV, yeah, kind of got my attention of going, oh, they're not trying to be anything that the character isn't from the mm. books. So honestly, it was like watching the pilot the night it premiered. I was hooked then, and I was it was appointment viewing for me in an age where it's all streaming. Um, yeah, it it was one of the shows. That and Supergirl when Supergirl came around. Those were mm. the two shows where it was appointment viewing for all first three seasons for me. Mm. And I was, I was also going to say that the big bad of the season you came in on was the thinker or Clifford DeVoe. And that was kind of, I mean, obviously, you know, then being a fan, it was kind of a change of pace after three uh, speedster uh, seasons, obviously, kind of with your perspective as a fan beforehand and the villains that have come after, what do you think made The Thinker stand out in that season? I really enjoyed uh, coming in with, like Thinker was such a, a more intellectual villain and just mm. the, the basic concept when I joined the show on the writing team was we're gonna have the fastest man alive against the fastest mind alive. Right. And that right away got me extremely, creatively excited for all the possibilities. It's something that 
uh, Flash and Barry Allen has not really encountered before. It felt mm. fresh. It felt new. Um, I had the privilege of writing the the origin of the Thinker episode, right. um, episode seven of season four. So be, having the chance to really dig deeper into, okay, who's this person as a human? Uh, his and and telling such a tragic story of a debilitating illness, and he makes he does this to himself to to get these abilities to save himself, and it just takes over, and he becomes all mind and no heart. To me, that those are just the kind of very core stories of like what the difference is between the hero and the villain, um, oh. and so it was really fascinating for me to to explore a type of villain who is almost the complete opposite of, of Barry uh, mm. and, and would offer so many new challenges I hadn't even seen as a fan. Yeah, and obviously ob um, you bring up Barry and as well as in The Flash as many like different vibrant uh, characters. Do you have a favorite one to write for? Because um, I've often heard that uh, necessarily the main character isn't always the favorite. I don't know whether that's the thing that you've heard as well, but does it apply in your case? I have heard that. And it's, you know, with, with seven seasons of a show and your main character is your, your pillar of strength, it can be very challenging come season mm -hmm. seven to tell new stories and push his internal and personal conflict in new ways. Because mm -hmm. you can't completely undo the character. You can't get rid of the core traits and values which define who he is. I mean, that's yeah. that's what the show is. Um, some shows do that, but those are far more serialized, and that's kind of the point of them. Take like a Walter White kind of thing. Yeah. But so with that, I I have heard not not many writers on our show, but I have heard that in the past, like the least interesting character is the main character. For me. I take that as, as really a personal challenge of, no, this is, the show's called The Flash. So mm. he needs to be the most interesting character. Is it harder to do for us? Absolutely. But it you find then is just the box that we're working in is getting smaller. And so we just have to work harder. And hopefully in working harder, we're gonna actually discover really interesting things with him that we haven't necessarily explored yet. So Barry is still my favorite character to really think about and really just try to um, find the new perspectives and experiences he hasn't quite faced yet. Mm. And I suppose looking at uh, people who might want to work in TV, like how would you describe um, how a writer's room is operated or run? Sure. So the writer's room is, I remember the first time I, I sat in a writer's room, the first job I ever had as a writer and joining that circle I had mm. no idea what that room was going to be either and it's basically just a large or small depending on which show you're on a uh, small room of all like-minded creatives sitting around the table uh, sure. talking about these characters just playing make-believe I mean, I remember the first day of being in the writer's room on my first show and certainly on Flash and just feeling like I was home. This is, these mm -hmm. are my people. And so the process generally is we will all come in. There's a, on Flash, there's 10 of us, 10 or 12, depending on the time of year. And we will sit down and, and we'll start. We, the whole room is covered in, in whiteboards. Mm -hmm. And on any given whiteboard, is usually a different episode depending where we're at, but I'll, I'll just take you through kind of what a, an episode from scratch would be. So we would come in and we would just start talking and we would talk about blue sky ideas. So, okay, we're doing episode, just making something off the top of my head. We're mm -hmm. gonna do episode 15. Well, we know because we've spent the early part of the season talking with our showrunner what the big overarching story is. So we know we need to do this, this one thing, um, but that's not necessarily the whole episode. So we start talking about, all right, where's Barry emotionally? What happened last week? What's going on in his life? What's, what's, where does he need to go by the end of this episode or, or maybe even from two episodes from now? What can, we, what can we explore emotionally 
with him and 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 maybe a, a particular relationship maybe it's him and iris maybe it's him and cisco mm. what can we do with him that takes him on, a, on an emotional journey that is that is engaging that uh, is something exciting that we would want to see as fans we would want to write as writers and hopefully that grant would want to play as a performer yeah so we'll spend quite a bit of time uh, days even just talking blue sky of all these different kind of options all these different versions and what you find in a in a writer's room is at least in, in this one is i'm a firm believer of don't go to the whiteboard too soon um mm. I, I didn't even coin that myself i think i i read john sweden say that but you don't go to the whiteboard too soon because you really just need to let the ideas organically grow and the story present itself and with a group of creatives in a writer's room as you get talking people latch on to the idea or a a, a story yeah. that we can start wrapping our heads around so it becomes it's it's almost like an improv game in a way mm. i grew up playing a lot of theater sports as a kid and drama nerd and that telling a, a one word at a time story around around the table it's it's very similar to kind of what it's like it's just it's make believe and it's playing and it's talking about all these different situations and permutations until we feel like we can say okay this week Barry is going to go on this kind of journey with Cisco yeah okay we can and then we'll go to the whiteboard and really start drilling down into the specifics but but up until then, the, the early process is a lot of is a lot of like make believe. It's a lot of the stuff that I think we all have done growing up, whether it be as kids playing outside, make believe, uh, playing with action figures, making up stories. It's now we're just we're just doing that with with people in our in our minds and and who amazing actors are going to bring to life. Yeah. And I was, I was going to say, because something I've noticed and something I was um, reading a bit about is uh, that at least many of the episodes on the show are written by two people. And I know there's like pre-existing partnerships that have come in, but would a lot of it be kind of uh, mis um, like mixing and matching different members of the writing group together, I suppose. And um, like, what have you enjoyed about that process? Oh, absolutely. So because of the episode order of our show um in a in a non-covid year we mm. would be around 20 episodes when i joined season four is 23 and then we went down to 22 for, uh, for uh six mm. and it looks like it'll be a little less for seven but that's out of our control yeah uh but the process so because of that because the schedule is so intense as far as how long it takes to write these scripts we, you need two writers on each script just in order to churn it out, finish a draft, go through the notes process with the studio and the network where they will weigh in and give their thoughts and you do your tweaks and, and then prep it uh, and shoot it. Yeah. So ha you need two people on it. Um, there's only, as far as my time on the show, been one true writing team where they came into the show as a writing team and they're a writing team on the show and right uh, john butler and, and gabe garza now he's yeah. on the show and but everybody else is is really kind of mixed and match per episode and mm. it's not something i had ever done prior yeah. to joining flash that's that just the, the way that this show worked and and honestly it's it's an amazing way to truly collaborate with with your colleague, with a with another writer on the show, to tell a singular vision, um, I found I really I really enjoyed. Okay, we're gonna we figured out what the story is, and now we mm. split. Who's gonna write which half between the two of us? I one of my favorite things is after X amount of days of us individually writing, is we we merge the script and to read through the story as a whole and read these scenes and, and be excited and surprised. And mm. it's, it's really kind of the, the only part now that I'm a part of the show 
where it makes me feel like that that guy who is appointment viewing watching the show as it aired every week because mm-hmm. I don't know necessarily what the scene is gonna I know it's gonna happen but I don't know what it's gonna feel like I don't know the surprising or funny things these characters are gonna say in these scenes so that's become mm-hmm. a real joy to to collaborate with a number of my colleagues yeah and obviously as you were saying um I guess obviously in non-COVID times, you know, the 23, 22 episode seasons, there'd be a few that you wouldn't have had any involvement in writings. Are you able to enjoy those as like an audience member or do you think you're too close to the creative process to appreciate it as a fan? Yeah, it's, you know, it's funny is there comes a point in the year for us about halfway. So episode 10 or 11, Mm. where we're filming, uh, we're filming an episode, we're prepping an episode. An episode is, is currently being written. An episode is currently being broken or figured out by the writing team. Yeah. So depending what your position is, so for example, I just wrote episode 11. So yeah. I was out of the writer's room for, for some time. And by the time I get back, and I finished my script and, and I joined the writer's room again, they've already broken a couple of episodes. So mm. I, I'll, I'll read what I, I need to, to be caught up and, and contribute to the room. But, but I still get to like a fan. Now I get a full script by written by my colleagues in the email that I, I don't really, I, I know what the gist of it is, but I really don't know more than what say you would read as like a, a paragraph blurb of this is what Barry goes through this week. Mm. Um, so it is, those are really the moments where I get excited of, oh yeah, I don't know much about this episode at all. And now I get to read it as a fan. Yeah. And I suppose as well, um, in late 2019, early 2020, uh, The Flash was a part of the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover event. So I guess, how would you describe being on uh, a show associated with such a uh, you know, historic moment for television. You know, that was, I, I felt like the like front row seats to the greatest, like, all-star game of all time. Mm. Um, I didn't write that episode, so I wasn't part of the writer's room for it, but sure. Sterling Gates and Lauren Serto, the, the writers who, who did do it, they would come back to our writer's room because uh, they would have a, a separate writer's room of, whoever the writers were on each show Mm. and all of those writers would get together and they would work out the big story together, uh, which just sounds so awesome. And then Sterling and Lauren would come back and and give us the update of what's going on. And every day they would do that. It it felt like being front row center at a, at an all-star game. And it's, it's fun to be on this side of it now because I can talk about, they would come in and say, Oh my goodness, we're doing, crisis on infinite earth oh my goodness we're gonna have uh we're gonna have the 90s flash like come back and then this is gonna happen to him mm. oh we're gonna have burt ward we're gonna have we're trying to get tom welling are we gonna get tom welling oh my god we got tom welling like mm. <laughs> all of these like stacked, i remember that it? it was it was huge i mean and it just kept coming i remember okay conversations are happening we might have a lucifer cameo blew mm. my mind um and then one day it was my my favorite day was being I was breaking an episode and John and Gabe the EPs they they came into the separate room I was in and they said have you talked to Eric who's our showrunner I mm-hmm. said no he's like okay go into the main room and he's he's talking with some of the writers so I go in so some had heard the news and some hadn't and it's fun now to be able to talk about it. I couldn't talk about it for a long time sure. so I go into the writers room and Eric closes the door. And he tells us that uh, about Ezra Miller yeah. coming in and doing his cameo. And that that was probably one of the coolest fan moments I've ever had on the show. I think I, I, think I did a backflip. Um, I, I did something crazy and overly dramatic. But yeah. to be, again, to be front row center of, oh my goodness, I feel this just hearing the information. I cannot wait to watch and hear fans' reaction. Mm. Uh, yeah, because I remember um, 
after Crisis came out and seeing an interview with Eric Wallace wasn't Ezra Miller relatively last minute to it. That was kind of almost a surprise to him that they'd got Ezra Miller or, or, or my misunderstanding that. Yeah, it was about, if memory serves, it was about a month after we filmed our Crisis episode. Yeah. And also, um, speaking of episodes, another like one that you wrote, uh, Licensed to Elongate, was directed by Danielle Panabaker, who obviously plays Caitlin Snow and Killer Frost. And how different was working with, with Danielle in a different creative standpoint? Oh, it was... It was one of the largest thrills of, of my entire time on the show. I mean, because mm. like Danielle and I have worked together as as writer, producer and, and performer, and, and she's always brought her A-game there. And I had no doubt she was going to do it again with this episode. Uh, she's so incredibly collaborative, so yeah. prepared. She, from the early onset, um, she was watching all these James Bond movies and she and myself and Jeff Hirsch, who's the co-writer of that episode, mm. we were all talking about our references and what things we kind of want to play homage to, but at the same time, the things that we want unique to, to Barry and the things that we want unique to Ralph. And it was, so to be with Danielle, so I went up to Vancouver to, to be on set with her yeah. uh, and to really like watch this, this other side of her abilities come out and and really flourish was so inspiring, um, especially to watch like because she's in a really unique position where she's directing her castmates. Yeah, and I learned so much just from watching her and how she communicated with with the actors and and how she communicated with the crew of of what she was looking for and and how to kind of. Uh, guide the performers in the direction they needed to go and, and collaborate with her about tweaking some scenes to, to make it kind of resonate a little stronger. So that experience was, was a real joy to, to just sit there and, and collaborate with her. And, and we spent, we had so much fun on that episode. We had so many yeah. good times. Um, it really also has changed how I communicate with, with all of our cast. Um, I learned so much from her. Um, so mm. that was, that was a real privilege. Yeah. And obviously, I, um, I'll, I'll, just from an outsider perspective, I would say that, um, getting on the flash is quite a cool achievement. And I suppose outside of it, what would you say is your proudest career moment? Outside of the Flash, yeah, I you know it would still have to be uh, the very first writing job I ever got. Uh, mm -hmm. I wrote on a show called Motive in Canada for for CTV, and that prior to then it was it was just like a lot of people experience and are experiencing and will experience is just yeah. the hustle. So I had moved from Vancouver to Toronto and Canada, which is kind of where you need to be in my experience. It might have changed since, but yeah. it's kind of where you need to be if you want to break into Canadian TV writing. And I'd spent years, a uh, couple years, really just hustling and writing spec pilots of my own mm. nonstop, trying to get feedback, trying to become a better writer, trying to meet with anybody who would have a coffee with me to just learn about what is the best way in like what is what do you think of the script uh working on writing on web series for for free just for fun um and building relationships over time to the point where then the opportunity on motive came up and sending in a script of mine that i was very proud of and having it resonate with the showrunners at the mm -hmm. time and then being offered to come and really start my career that was that's when really everything changed for me personally uh, as far as that was the goal that was why I moved my life across the country away from friends and family I knew two people in Toronto mm. to pursue something to really persevere through the very hard times and yeah. uh, with that singular goal so that would probably be the 
the most proud moment prior to Flash. Right, and I suppose also to throw in a question that maybe only a Flash fan would understand, but uh, do you have a favorite Harrison Wells? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I absolutely do, and it's it still surprises me that he's he's my favorite just because of the journey has been so surprising. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Sherlock has been my absolute favorite. I was so surprised at the beginning of of that season of season five when when Tom brought his Sherlock to life. Yeah, that excited. I honestly, I, at first blush, I had no idea what to make of it. I had really no idea of going. Okay, this is. <laughs> Mm -hmm. This is a character we're going to live with for for quite a while, and but then as we told more stories and as we utilized him in in, in more emotional ways, I found myself constantly thinking about that character. I found myself constantly thinking about how he is such a wonderful, unique personality that really yeah. kind of shakes up the show in a great way. Um, and Tom had his, which we didn't write, by the way, Tom did this on his own, where he would have the ongoing joke of correcting people when they said his name. Mm. Uh, he'd say Sherlock, and he'd go Sherlock. And mm. my wife is French Canadian. And so Tom and I would talk about that. And I, even I don't really know if I ever pronounced the name correctly, but that was, it was always a fun thing to, to watch the dailies or watch the cut and see what Tom was going to do, because it was always unique. Uh, so yeah, that's that's certainly a Wells that I probably have enjoyed the most. For sure. Uh, I think definitely compared to the to the previous ones, there's definitely a clear difference. Um, but definitely a very unique character there, for sure. But oh, just to kind of move to the next question, though, uh, if people wanted to find out more about your work or you personally, where could they look? Uh, where could they look? I IMDb has a has a full list of everything that I've I've worked on. Um, a, a number of great Canadian series, many of which are still going. Yeah. Um, as far as I I think I'm on Instagram. I'm not really much on social media, but yeah. <laughs> so I would say uh, looking over at IMDb if you're looking for more work uh, that I've done, that would probably be the best place. Right. And this is actually the last question I've got here. And uh, what are you most looking forward to in 2021? Obviously, after the year we've had and, you know, that kind <laughs> sure. of thing. Uh, honestly, it's like it's from a professional standpoint, I'm I'm extremely excited with the season that we're making right now. Mm. Um, season seven won't come out until I believe February is when we're going to premiere. But I, I'm extremely proud of a number of the episodes uh, and a number of the stories that we're doing, I think it's unexpected. It's brave. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to keep telling those stories and, and watch the fan reaction. And then personally, I'm just excited for, uh, for the world to get healthier 